What is going on, hybrid shooters? It's Jason Vong, and in my last video, I talked about how to get your first wedding gig. And one of the ways to do it is to become a second shooter for somebody who's in the business. So in this video, I wanted to share with you guys how to be a fantastic second shooter. I'm gonna go over what most first shooters will expect from you, how to be good at your job, and how to kick ass at it, so much so that you'll be hired again and again and again until you become a first shooter. By the way, if you've been enjoying these wedding tips, be sure to let me know in the comments down below and give this video a thumbs up. So a little bit about me, I've been second shooting weddings for the past three years now. I even led some of them. I'm also the main editor of our team as well. So I know what to do and what to expect as a second shooter. So whenever I work with my buddy Eric, he's the first shooter, I'm the second shooter, but we're not really defined by our title because the way that we operate, I sometimes take the lead as well. So the whole goal of this video is to not only teach you on how to become a proficient second shooter, but also a reliable partner to your teammate. Because once they trust you after you do a bang up job, you'll become their default person that they'll keep calling for their wedding gigs. And who knows, maybe one day they'll accidentally double book and they'll ask you to lead one of their weddings. All right, so I'll go over a few basic things first. Now, first shooters don't really expect much other than these few things. One, dress appropriately and act appropriately. Now, dressing appropriately is super easy. Just have a nice button down shirt, nice button down pants, and some formal shoes. When in doubt, just go all black. Now, acting appropriately, that's just common sense. That just goes without saying. Don't be hitting on the bridal party, Ted Mosby. Well, I mean, you can, but just don't be too creepy. If they're not vibing you at all, just, just, just stop. Number two, be aware of the schedule. We don't expect you to memorize the entire itinerary, but just know when all the main events are happening. Like if the ceremony is happening at three o'clock, just remember that. Now what helps in my opinion is if you screenshot the itinerary onto your phone, you don't want to rely on your internet connection because sometimes it can be spotty, sometimes you don't have internet connection uh, wherever you're at. Or better yet, have the itinerary printed out. In addition to being aware of your schedule, just be punctual, just be on time for things. Number three, have good communication with your first shooter. Let them know where you're at and what you're doing. For example, let's just say you're in charge of doing groom prep and you haven't met up with your first shooter at the start of the day. Just let them know that you're at the venue, you already got the groom prep, or you want to move on to something else like getting detail shots or venue shots. Just kind of give them a heads up and let them know what you're doing and where you're at. And when you're with your first shooter, always keep an eye out on them because sometimes they'll be giving you signals as to what to do. Maybe you're in the way or maybe you need to go wide or go tight on the couple. So just make sure to pay attention to your first shooter whenever you guys are in the same space. Number four, be quick on your feet, but don't rush. So what that means is just be alert, just be attentive. Let's just say the wedding ceremony just finished up and you have to move on to the reception and maybe you got maybe like 10 to 15 minutes to do it. So just quickly strike down those tripods and move them into the reception and get that set up right away. Just because things are slowing down doesn't mean you have to slow down as well because you never know what's gonna happen that's gonna force you to have to rush. So the more that you can do to save yourself and your first shooter a lot of time is just to get things done right away and don't lag behind. All right, so those are just the basic things. Let's go ahead and move on to the technical aspect, the things that the first shooter will be expecting from you. So your role as a second shooter is fairly simple. You're just there documenting the event. You're just videotaping the events as they're happening at a wedding. Whereas the first shooter takes on more of a creative role where they get the cinematic shots for the highlights. Now that's not to say you can't be creative yourself. You totally can, but just make sure you take care of your stuff first before trying to do anything fancy. Number one, knowing how to properly expose a shot. Seriously, that is something that you can actually pitch to whoever you're trying to be a second shooter for. Like, hey, I know how to properly expose a shot. And don't forget to show your work because nothing drives us more bonkers than seeing clip highlights and blown out faces. If you're running into a tricky lighting situation, it's always better to underexpose by half or a full stop because it's easier to raise the shadows than to bring down clip highlights. By the way, if you want to learn how to properly expose a shot, I got a video up here teaching you how to not overexpose by using this handy little feature called zebras. 
Number two, stable footage. Now, people will probably argue that this is more important than blown out highlights. I would say they're both equally the same. We want perfectly exposed shots and stable footage. So if you're gonna be hand-holding your setup, you better make sure that your camera have in-body image stabilization or your lens have image stabilization. Because once we have shaky footage, there's no amount of warp stabilization that can save it. So best be on a monopod or a tripod. Now, once you lock off your shot, don't touch it. Unless the framing is completely off, you're cutting off your subject, that's when you want to move the camera. But let's just say your composition is a little off, but you have all your subject in the frame. Don't touch it. So I'm gonna use myself as an example, a mistake that I've made. I was shooting the father of the bride handing her off to the groom. Now the composition was a little off, but the framing was fine because everybody was in the shot. But I felt like, oh, I can compose this a little bit better. But I forgot that I locked off the pan and the tilt axis on my tripod. So when I was trying to move it, it was just like shaky, shake. I was shaking it all up and it was just bad. I was like, oh man, I shouldn't have touched it. Again, as a second shooter, we're not expecting Hollywood composition. We're more focused on getting the shot. Now I'm not saying you shouldn't adjust your shot. If your framing is completely off, you're cutting off your subject or it's composed horribly, then definitely do it, but also wait for the right time to do it as well. Again, this goes back to being attentive. If there's not much happening in your frame, then go ahead and make that adjustment. But when there's something super, super, super important happening in your frame and your composition is a little bit off, but your framing is fine, just let it be. Number three, making sure your subject is in focus. Now, I'm not ranking these in any particular order. If, I, if anything, these three tips should be ranked highly number one priority. So like the other two tips, if your subject is out of focus, then it's garbage to us. Even if your camera has the most amazing autofocus feature, do not rely on it. Always double check your focus. If it helps, get yourself a monitor, get yourself a small HD focus, because those things help a lot. Whew. Okay, so those are probably the three most important things that a first shooter will be expecting from you. Let me give you a couple more bonus ones though. Number four, give us different angle coverages. Give us a wide, give us a medium, give us a close up. At the very least, just give us two out of the three because that will seriously help us out when we're cutting in post. So let's just say, for example, you're doing groom prep and one of the shots that you can get is a medium shot of him putting on his blazer and a close up shot of him buttoning it up. All right, so the last tip in this section is do not overshoot. Just make sure you're concentrated on the important things at the wedding. If the first shooter told you to get coverage of the cocktail hour, just focus on the details, a few people drinking, chatting, laughters, that's it. You do not need to shoot over 20 guests for that. Or if they're doing family photos after the ceremony, just get us a few shots of the immediate families and move on. You don't have to stick around for them to get through all of their relatives and their extended family. You don't need to do that. Or even dancing, just get us a few shots. The first shooter will likely just take care of all of the dancing scenes for the highlight. You yourself just maybe get a couple of shots and that's it. By the way, just a quick plug, if you guys are looking for music for your YouTube videos or wedding films, check out this site that I've been using for a while now. It's called artlist.io. If you sign up with my link in the description box below, you get two months for free bonus, plus it directly supports this channel. You can also preview the tracks before committing into a membership. So use my link in the description box below to browse some of those music. All right, so those are the things that the first shooter will be expecting from you. So let's go ahead and move on to how to become a kick-ass second shooter. You know, things that the first shooter will not be expecting, but when they see it, they're like, dude, this guy's so awesome. This guy's making my life so much easier. And that's what you wanna do for your first shooters to make their life easier because that way they can focus more on the creative aspect of the wedding film instead of the technical aspect. So here we go. Number one, get detail shots, get establishing shots. So you remember how I said, be quick on your feet, but don't rush. If you have your stuff done already, like you have all the prep stuff done already, you already set up the tripods for the wedding ceremonies and whatnot, go ahead and start focusing on detail shots, on establishing shots. If you know how to use a gimbal, use it. Get establishing shots of the wedding ceremony site, the venue that you're in. Get close up on the flowers, get shots of the gazebo, get signages, you know. These are the types of shots that could be helpful for the first shooter when they're editing. Kind of gives them something to cut to, to establish before cutting into the ceremony or cutting 
heading into the events of the reception. Now, oftentimes your first shooter will be out with the couples. They're running late because they're trying to squeeze in as much romantic shots as they can. They don't have time to set up for the ceremony or get a wide shot of the reception hall. This is where you step in to do that for them. If you know how to use a gimbal, use the gimbal and get those establishing shots. If not, just a simple pan or tilt would do. Number two, have tripods and camera combinations ready to go for each event. So this is something that you might wanna discuss with your first shooter the day before or a week before. Have them give you instructions on what camera combinations and tripod combinations to use for the ceremony, for the receptions, because that way, when you can at least have those set up already, they can come back and place them where they need them to be. Or if you know where to put them, that'd be great too. In addition to that, if your first shooter likes to use a light at wedding receptions, just make sure you have that set up as well. Number three, know how to use the audio equipment. If you know how to lob the groom, you know how to lob the officiant, do it because that's one less thing the groom has to worry about. Take the main audio recorder to the DJ and have them patch you up. Make sure you do a sound test, make sure the audio is at the proper level and hit the record button right away. Number four, keep batteries charging. If your team shoots with the Sony Alpha cameras, particularly the Series 2 cameras, these tiny little, these tiny little batteries right here, these goes out really quickly. So when you get to the ceremony site, when you get to the reception site, find those outlets and get these batteries charging. Pretty much you're the medic in the group, so if your first shooter needs a fresh battery, you at least have a bunch of charging and ready to go. Last but not least in this crazy long list of being an awesome second shooter is to be creative. Again, we're not here to limit your creativity. If you have the time to do it, as long as you have your stuff taken care of, then by all means do it. If you're working with your first shooter on wedding romantics, just make sure you're getting the different shots that they're not getting. For example, if they're shooting wide on a gimbal, be on a tight lens to get the close up. If they're on a tight lens, make sure you're getting a wide. That would help them out so much in editing because they have more materials to cut back and forth to. And if you see something cool, say something. Like if you feel like a, the couple will look really cool at this one spot in the location you guys are shooting, just be like, hey, there's a really dope shot that I think we can get. If there's time, obviously they would want you to do it. But if not, they're pressed on time, then don't feel bad about it. Essentially, the more things you know how to do, the better. We're not expecting you to be drone pilot on the spot, obviously. But basic things like setting up tripods, um, camera combinations, knowing how to work with the audio recorder. These are basic traits that I think every second shooter should know how to do because it goes a long way, makes everybody's lives easier, and you'll get hired again and again and again and again until you become a first shooter. First shooters of weddings, did I miss any crucial tips? Let me know in the comments down below. If you're shooting a wedding this weekend, tag me in your story. My handle's at Jason B Media. I would love to see you guys in action and on the field. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in my next video. Peace.